the solitary hunger look in his eyes went straight to joe's warm heart the solitary solitary here means lonely lonely and hungry look in his eyes went straight to joe's warm heart she had been so simply taught that there was no nonsense in her head and at 15 she was as innocent and frank as a child so with joe's jo and lori getting to know each other they were speaking with each other they were talking they were having a conversation she came to know that lori had no mother and he was longing for a family he didn't have any so she the this particular thought of jo the solitary hungry look the hungry look in his eyes means his look for motherly love and family and friends so this trait went directly into jo's warm heart now she was 15 years old and she she had uh, no no nonsense so she just understood what jo felt like lori was sick and lonely and feeling how rich she was in home and happiness she gladly tried to share it with him her face was very friendly and her sharp voice unusually gentle as she said so <clears throat> lori was sick and lonely here means that lori was sick because of loneliness he didn't have any family he didn't have anything to share with any friends nobody was around him he was well he was very rich but he was poor in sense of a family and uh, motherly love and all those things so he felt that how she how rich she was and she was willing to share her happiness of friendship of family with him well will never draw that curtain any more and i give you leave to look as much as you like i just wish though instead of peeping you'd come over and see us mother is so splendid should do you heaps of good and beth would sing to you if i begged her to and amy would dance meg and i would make you laugh over funny stage properties and we'd have jolly times wouldn't your grandpa let you so she said that since uh, lori had been seeing all the entire family their entire jolly time through the window of their home she said that i would now never draw the curtains anymore i would let you watch instead of that why don't you just come to our home where my mother will cook something for you okay and then beth would sing for you if i told her and amy and i would dance for you and we would make you laugh we would do everything we would have a jolly time wouldn't your gra- grandpa let you wouldn't your grandfather uh, grandfather leave you so here bring out the contrast in the lives of jo and lori in a few lines so that there is a, a big of uh, what is it transist a contrast between jo's life and lori's life so jo had a mother sister sisters and a family but was poor and modest while lori was very rich had all comforts a dozen of servants but no family except his grandfather so this is the difference between jo's life and lori's life i think he would if you if your mother asked him is very kind though he does not look so and he lets me do what i like pretty much only he's afraid i might be a bother to strangers began lori brightening more and more so now we see that lori's face was turning really bright lori was expressing himself he was very comfortable while he was with jo in jo's company he just kept on speaking he said that my grandfather will leave me if you want i can come to your house but the only thing is that grandmother your mother should come and uh, request my grandfather to let me out into your home because he doesn't like me to be a bother to strangers let me bother means he does not like me to leave uh, be with the strangers he would love to leave me to you but you have to ask that we are not strangers we are neighbors and you needn't think you would be a bother so she said that we are not your strangers we are the neighbors neighbors means a neighbor is a person who lives besides your home and you wouldn't be a bother a bother it means nuisance disturbance you would not become a disturbance if you come and visit us at our home we want to know you and i have been trying to do it ever so long so she is saying that i always wanted to know you we would love to have you with us we would love to have your company we haven't been here a great while you know but we got acquainted with all our neighbors but you she's saying that i'm very good along with everybody my family is nice we like to know each other we know almost all the neighbors around here just you so lori's reply is you see grandpa lives among his books and doesn't mind much what happens outside mr brook my tutor doesn't stay here you know 
so he's saying that grandpa does not like to be a social animal he's not a social person he does not like to go and mix with other people because he likes to be in company of his books and he doesn't want me uh, to be outside because mr brook he is his tutor means his teacher who usually comes during what do you say maybe day times to teach him want to go about with me so i just stop at home and get on as i can so mr brook is his tutor is his tuition teacher maybe he is home schooled that means uh, whatever he wants a teacher comes and teaches him at his home so he doesn't go anywhere so he just stops at his home that's bad you ought to make an effort and go visiting everywhere you are asked then you will have plenty of friends and pleasant places to go never mind being bashful it won't last long if you keep going so jo's reply was quite funny she said that instead of uh, waiting at your home you should go outside you should talk with people you should uh, let people know about you you could have plenty of friends there are so many nice places where you can go instead of being bashful bashful here means instead of being so shy like, and you sitting at your home not going outside not making friends instead of being like this you should go outside explore the world because being bashful being shy is not going to help you lorry turned red again now this turning red was not because he was very offended or angry this was because he felt how could a girl say such things to you okay uh, that you should not be shy and all those things mostly it happens that most of the times the girls are the ones who are very shy but here the case was different jo was an exploring explorer girl who wanted to do everything which excited her and lorry was kind of a reserved shy guy who did not speak much but wasn't offended at being accused of bashfulness for there was so much goodwill in jo and it was impossible not to take her blunt speeches as kindly as they were meant so it is her behavior jo's behavior was very straight forward and very warm but whatever she said those were kind words so there was no other meaning out of this no where lorry felt accused or no where lorry felt offended that how can a girl say such things such harsh things to me she was actually speaking the truth she just wanted lorry to go outside make friends not be shy and be happy do you like your school asked the boy changing the subject after a little pause during which he stared at the fire and jo looked about her well pleased so he just wanted to change the subject so he asked her do you like school do you go to the school don't go to school i am a businessman a uh, girl i mean i go to wait on my great aunt and a dear cross old soul she is to answer jo so she doesn't go to school she is maybe looking after her aunt because of that she doesn't go to school so she is expressing herself as a businessman no no a business girl lorry opened his mouth to ask another question but remembering just in time that it wasn't manners to make too many inquiries into people's affairs he shut it again and looked uncomfortable so lorry tried to lorry was opening up now lorry was in company of jo and he started to speak because your company matters since jo was a, such a lovely girl who was keeping on chatting on different topics with lorry now lorry was also being comfortable with her he was coming out of his uh, what to say bashfulness he was opening up and then he suddenly uh, what to say remembered about the good manners that he was taught that he should not make too many inquiries into people's affair people affairs here means he should not make in people's life it is very wrong to ask too many questions to people who, uh, to a person or uh, anybody who have just met jo liked his good breeding and didn't mind having a laugh at aunt march so she gave him a lovely description of so good breeding here means good upbringing means something good manners where a family is taught so his breeding was very nice his upbringing was very nice his grandfather had taught him a number of things which included to be a good listener to respect the people to if somebody is uh, speaking let him speak okay and he was not very angry and he was not much upon, uh, offended by anybody so he uh, she gave a lively description of the fidgety old lady so this aunt Ma- march is someone who's related with the march's family he started giving a description of this old lady where she does her business so her fat poodle poodle here is here means a type of a dog a breed of a dog 
The parrot that talks perished at the library where she revelled. Revelled means she enjoyed her time without any noise, uh, noisy way, without drinking and dancing. She enjoyed the what do you say her her work in the library. Laurie enjoyed that immensely, and when she told about the prim old gentleman who came once to woo Aunt March, and in the middle of a fine speech, the Paul, how Paul. Had tweaked his wig off to his great dismay. The boy lay back and laughed till the tears ran down his cheeks, and a maid popped her head in to see what was the matter. So Joe starts telling a number of series of incidents where Paul had once tweaked his wig off with great dismay. Means that particular person who came to woo Aunt March, he lost his wig to Paul. The boy lay back and laughed till the tears ran down his cheek, and a maid popped her head in to see what was the matter. So that entire scene was so funny that the boy was laughing on the couch. So one maid just looked inside to see actually what's the matter. Oh, that does me no end of good. Tell me on, please," he said, taking his face out of the sofa cushion, red and shining with merriment. So example, uh, or we can say that. Lori was excited and Lori was enjoying the good time with Joe. Much elated with her success, Joe did tell on all about their plays and plans, their hopes and fears for father, and the most interesting events of the little world in which the sisters lived. They then they got to talking about books, and to Joe's delight, she found. Lori loved them all as well as she did, and she had read even more than herself. So they started talking about that particular subject, which interested her a lot, and she wanted to speak about them as books. And Laurie also loved to read books. If you like them so much, come down and see ours. Grandfather is out, so you needn't be afraid," said Laurie, getting up. "I am not afraid of anything," returned Joe with a toss of the head. So Joe said that I am not afraid of anything. I don't feel afraid of anything. I can come. I can go and directly see your grandfather's uh, library. I don't believe you are," exclaimed the boy, looking at her with much admiration. Though he privately thought she would have good reason to be a trifle afraid of the old gentleman if she met him in some of his moods. So, <laughs> Laurie somewhere thought that there was no person, or there would be no person who was not afraid of his grandfather. But she, he really somewhere, uh, somewhere felt that maybe Joe must be a little afraid of the gentleman, means his grandfather. The atmosphere of the whole house being summer, like Lori led the way from room to room, letting Joe stop to examine whatever struck her fancy. So they were moving from one room to another, and the entire uh, atmosphere of the house was summer-like. Before it was winter-like; it was dull, it was cold. But because of Joe's entrance in the house and with Joe's company, she was just talking and experiencing, or explaining so many different th- uh, types of things. And Laurie was enjoying her company. Laurie was laughing. So suddenly everything became summer-like. So they were stopped at every place, and she used to speak something. And so at last they come came to the library where she clapped her hands and pranced. She pranced means she jumped with a delight. She was very happy as she always did when she especially uh, delighted. She was very happy to see the entire. Uh, library now it was lined with books and there were pictures and statues and distracting little cabinets full of coins and curiosities so th- there were a number of things in grandfather's room it was lined with books and there were pictures and statues and distracting little cabinets full of coins and curiosities and sleepy hollow chairs square tables and bronzes and best of all a great open fireplace with quaint tiles all around it so there were a number of things in grandfather's Small place. There were little cabinets, means little storage boxes with hat coins and uh, what do you say? Curiosities. Means she thought that where did coins come from? Which country? And so many things. Statues were there. Pictures were there. Sleepy hollow chairs. Means there were long chairs, tables, and bronze. Means maybe medals and so many different type of things, which just increased the curiosity in Joe. What a richness," she said. I mean, so Joe said, "What richness!" Signed Joe, sinking into the depth of a velar chair and gazing about her with an air of intense satisfaction. So there was a velar rocking chair, an armchair, okay, and where she sat on the chair and say, "What richness! Wow, so many different types of things." Theodore Lawrence, you ought to be the happiest boy in the world," she added impressively. So the name of the lorry boy. Or Laurie is Theodore Lawrence, and he was very uh, what to say. 
जो एक्सक्लेम दैट ही वॉज द हैप्पीस्ट बॉय इन द वर्ल्ड बिकॉज ही वॉज सराउंडेड बाय सो मेनी वंडरफुल थिंग्स अ फेलो कांट लिव ऑन बुक सेट लॉरी शेकिंग हिज हेड एज ही पर्स्ट ऑन अ टेबल अपोजिट he said that i cannot live with books a fellow can't live on books means uh, maybe without people a person cannot live entirely on books it is such an odd phrase she meant that with the company of the books she could live but for lorry people were also important and he didn't have any in his life before he could say more a bell rang and joe flew up exclaiming exclaiming the alarm so she understood that somebody had come mercy me it's your grandpa so she understood that somebody had come and that was a grandpa and she said initially she said that she wasn't afraid of anybody but now she actually felt really afraid well what if it is you are not afraid of anything you know returned the boy looking wicked wicked here means in a naughty expression in a naughty way he said that you are not afraid of anything then why you are afraid now I think I am a little bit afraid of him but I don't know why I should be mommy said I might come and I don't think you are uh, any worse for it said jo composing herself though she kept her eyes on the door she said that I am not afraid of anything but I should be so mommy here is the mother of all the four girls and she said that you shouldn't be afraid of anything but you should be and she started to look at the door as if somebody is going to approach her so we had seen in the story that jo and lori are enjoying their company they both are talking they both are laughing and suddenly there is a knock on the door and lori says that maybe it's my grandfather and somewhere jo had earlier told him that i'm not afraid of your grandfather why should i be afraid of your grandfather but suddenly there he thought lori thought that she's got somewhere a bit afraid i am a great deal better for it and ever so much obliged i am only afraid you are very tired of talking to me it was so pleasant i couldn't bear to stop said lori gratefully so when somebody knocked on the door somebody was there to meet lori and he told that i am just enjoying my time here it was so pleasant that i couldn't bear to stop him she was laughing he was out of control and everything was just going fine the doctor to see you sir said the maid beckoned as she spoke so the person who was at the door to meet lori was actually the doctor and the maid came and gave the message so would you mind if i let you for a minute i suppose i must see him said lori so would you mind if i let you means is it okay if i leave you here alone till i go and visit the doctor don't mind me i am happy as a cricket here answered joe so i am happy as a cricket of speech you you used here and don't mind me i'm happy as a cricket here as simile there is a direct comparison between cho and the cricket in the state of being happy so cricket is a insect which is usually makes that particular type of sound when he is happy or afraid so next is lori went away and his guest amused herself in her own way so the guest here is jo she was uh, standing before a portrait of a old gentleman when the door opened again and without turning she said decidedly i'm sure now that i shouldn't be afraid of him for he's got kind eyes though his mouth is grim and he looks as if he had a tremendous will of his own he isn't as handsome as my grandfather but i like him so now uh, jo is all alone and she was just roaming around in the room and where she saw a portrait a picture of a old gentleman so this particular gentleman may be somewhere it could be lorry's grandfather so she without looking back she just started to speak and she said that uh, this particular portrait this old man in old gentleman in the picture has got kind eyes his mouth is grim means his mouth may be serious his looks are serious but looking at him it shows that maybe he's got a tremendous will power and he isn't as handsome as my grandfather that means lori's grandfather was very handsome as compared to her grandfather what do you say joe's handsome uh, joe's grandfather was extremely handsome according to joe but while joe said so she's saying that he isn't as handsome as her grandfather but i like him
Thank you, ma'am," said a gruff voice behind her, and there, to her great dismay, stood old Mr. Lawrence. So she was just speaking with the portrait, and she thought that maybe Laurie came back from the doctor's visit, and Laurie is standing behind her. But uh, for her, what do you say? Unfortunately, it was Mr. Lawrence himself who heard everything that Joe had said to the portrait. Poor Joe blushed till she couldn't blush any redder, and her heart began to beat uncomfortably fast as she thought. what she had said for a minute a wild desire to run away possessed her but that was cowardly and the girls would laugh at her so she resolved to stay and get out of the scrape as she could so she had done something which was what do you say which didn't suit uh, her entire thing because she had just told the portrait himself that you are not as handsome as my father your face is very dull your face is serious but you have a kind eyes and when she turned back she saw mr lawrence there and she just blushed means her face just turned red and red and she thought for once it is better i should run away but instead of running away she thought it would be very cowardly if she ran away and the girls would laugh her, to her actually all her sisters would uh, laugh at her so she thought that it should be better i stop a second look showed her that the living eyes under the bushy eyebrows were kinder even than the painted ones and there was a slight twinkle in them which lessened her fear a good deal the gruff voice was gruffer than ever and the old gentleman said abruptly after the dreadful pause so you are not afraid of me hey so when she saw at the person himself mr lawrence himself grandfather of theodore lawrence Uh, she felt that he wasn't as g- gruff he looked as grim his looking he was actually a better looking person his eyes were even kinder so she wasn't actually now afraid of that particular person because he looked even better and he he looked even kinder than the portrait so the gruff voice was gruffer than ever means she didn't ex- expect that mr lawrence's sound or his voice should be this gruff and she said he said so you are not afraid of me hey not much sir and you didn't think me as handsome as your grandfather not quite sir and i have got a tremendous will have i i only said i thought so but you like me in spite of it yes i do sir so this is a small conversation between joe and the grandfather of uh, lorry and somewhere there is a nice conversation where he is asking the questions and she is answer so there was a short and sweet conversation between joe and uh, theodore lorenz's grandfather and lorry uh, was unaware of this particular conversation and we can see how she was straight forward in her answer she didn't blink she didn't run away she was not a coward and she showed her will power such as no not much sir and you think me as as handsome as your grandfather not quite sir so here we can see that joe's uh, what do you say entire behavior or her she the way she answered was really nice and somewhere the old gentleman was also pleased with her that answer pleased the old gentleman he gave a short laugh shook hands with her and putting his his finger under her chin turned up her face examined it gravely and let it go saying with a nod you've got your grandfather's spirit if you haven't his face so somehow this his grandfather knows a new joe's grandfather and said that your face actually doesn't look like your grandfather but you have a spirit so there's some both of the both these people actually knew each other he was a fine man my dear but what is better he was a brave and honest one and i was proud to be his friend so joe's grandfather and lorry's grandfather were both friends thank you sir and joe was quite comfortable after that for it suited her exactly what have you been doing to this boy of mine hey was the next question sharply put so actually the grandfather wanted to know why was joe in his house and what was he she doing to his boy only trying to be neighborly sir so she was just saying that i was only trying to be neighborly with your uh, grandson you think he needs cheering a bit do you yes sir he seems a little lonely and young folks young folks would p- p- do him good perhaps we are only girls but we should be glad to help if we could or we don't forget the splendid christmas present you sent us said joe eagerly so joe somewhere just want to thank his grandfather tut tut
that was the boy's affair how is the poor woman so there was something that uh, what do you say lori's grandfather had did at which pleased jo also and she said that it was a nice thing that he did to the poor woman doing nicely sir and off went jo talking very fast as she told all about the himmels so himmels here is another neighbors of the marches and the lorenz uh, family in whom her mother had interested richer friends than they were just a father's way of doing good i shall come and see your mother soon for some fine day tell us so there's the tea bell we have it early to the boys account come down and go on being neighborly so she told everything about how her mother used to help the humans now the humans is a poor family in the context of the book uh, where it, it is seen that jo's family helps the humans with a number of things and she also told how her mother used to help them and her uh, what do you say his grandfather mr lawrence said that it is the same way your father used to be or your grandfather used to be tell your mother that i'll come and meet her soon and why don't you join the boy for the tea if you'd like to have me sir shouldn't ask you if i didn't and mr lawrence offered his arm with old fashion courtesy so this was uh, something that happened between jo's grandfather and uh, sorry Mr Lawrence and Jo where he offered her arm and he said that I would love to have you for tea and if I didn't want you I wouldn't ask you and they both uh, went away in the old fashioned courtesy what would Max say to this thought Jo as she was marched away while her eyes danced with fun as she imagined herself telling the story at home so this entire thing she was just excited of what would all the sisters say what would Max say what would Marmy her mother say about everything that happened with her as she left for home so here we end the lecture in the next lecture we shall be discussing about the summary of the chapter and the brainstorming question and answers